I'm uh, delighted to be here uh, with you this morning. Uh, this has been a long and arduous journey, but uh, we have arrived. Uh, we took this journey with wind at our face, but uh, that did not stop us uh, from moving ahead. Do you know, community colleges um, are probably the least understood and I would uh, say the least appreciated in the asset classes uh, that make up uh, higher education. But there is one data point, uh, actually two data points, that I think are worth uh, absorbing. One is about 48% of the students that study at universities in the United States today study at a community college. And here is a data point that I think will knock you off your seats. When I heard it, I didn't believe it, but then I did some research and indeed it's true. In the United States today, 20% of the doctoral degrees that are granted by American universities are to students who started their education at a community college. That really is a remarkable statistic which really shows You know, it was only a few years ago where I sat with our mayor uh, and talked with him for about an hour about community colleges. And we shared the, the problem that we both understood all too well, that graduation rates were just not where they need to be. And he said to me, what are you prepared to do about it? And I said, we have an idea. And that was the reason that I wanted to share the idea with the mayor. He listened and, of course, always asked deeply probing questions. And then he provided the capital that was needed to take this idea, shape it, and develop it into a program that has had absolutely startling results. The results were so startling that, again, I didn't believe it. I'm a data guy, and the mayor certainly is a data guy. So we hired MDRC, a very prominent research organization, to look at the data carefully and then tell us what the reality is. They came back and said, your data are spot on. You have a clean financial statement, and for that we were deeply pleased. But then we took the idea and said, we're on to something, and why don't we start a new community college? Throughout this entire period, this mayor has been extraordinarily supportive not only supportive in a political sense, but supportive uh, in a financial sense, to allow the City University to take the lead nationally and reimagining community college education. And that's why we were here today. If we were not supported by the mayor, none of us would be in the room today. And that is exactly the truth. Merrill Tisch has been a very strong advocate for what it is that we want to do. We were successful in recruiting Scott Evenbeck to be the founding uh, president of this new venture and had the undivided support of the CUNY trustees and the very, very strong support of our presidents who understood what it is that we wanted to do. There are two people among the vast array of people that really need to be uh, stood out today, and that is John Mogulescu, our uh, university dean and, and president of the uh, School of Professional Studies, and Tracy Mead, who really took the lead at a very early stage, and with John identified people from around the United States, people within the system, to come forward and mold and create a plan for this community college. 
but the one individual that really deserves the undivided attention of all of you is our great mayor. Mike Bloomberg, I have always said, is the university mayor that really understands community colleges. It is a mayor, he is a mayor who is leading the way nationally on educational reform. So today, Mr. Mayor, if you would join me at the podium, I would like to present to you something that is rarely, uh, rarely uh, given in the university. I have given it just a couple of times. It is the Chancellor's Medal, the highest award that we can confer in this great city university in New York. And Mr. Mayor, it was chosen for you because without your staunch support, none of us would be in this room today to celebrate an extraordinary experience and an extraordinary experiment that I believe is going to change the conversation nationally about how we educate community college students. So Mr. Mayor, if you would join me at the podium. Thank you. It weighs so much, I'm not sure I can keep standing up with it. Actually, I think I'll wear it all day long, and uh, we'll see what the pictures look like on the front page of the newspapers. Uh, Maya has medal. Uh, Matt, thank you so much. It really is an honor to receive the Chancellor's Medal, and it just goes to show that in New York City, anything is possible. If you have someone like me who is a pretty indi indifferent student winning such an important academic honor, uh, to paraphrase the great Yogi Berra, if some of my high school teachers were alive today, they'd probably be turning over in their graves. <laughs> and that's because they might knew Mike Bloomberg as the kind of student who made the top half of the class possible. I always tell that joke, and then I wait to see how long from when I deliver the punchline till you get the laughs. You guys got about a B plus. Uh, but even though, seriously, I may not have been a star pupil back in those days, um, since then I've learned to respect the power of education, including the importance of community colleges. And that's why three weeks ago, uh, three years ago, I stood next to Matt, and uh, you can call a chance on Matt. I can, because I'm the mayor. Uh, I wouldn't suggest you do it, faculty members. A little bit of respect, you know, it's academia. Um, I stood next to Matt on a stage at the Borough of Manhattan Community College and pledged to all we could to help create the new community college that's opening its doors today. And this is a day and age when, unfortunately, there's just not a lot of extra money in the city budget to support new projects. But we've made an exception for the new community college, and that's not only because it's the first new community college in our city in more than 40 years. It's also because I think this school has the potential to be a game-changing model for community colleges across the country. There's been a tre tremendous amount of attention focused on community colleges in recent years, and that's all to the good because, after all, as Matt pointed out, uh, about 45% of the college students in the nation attend community colleges. Community colleges also are exactly what Matt and I called them three years ago the gateway to the middle class, where students like the ones here today learn the skills and the credentials and get the credentials that increase their earning power and put them on a pathway to fulfilling careers and also to increasing the productivity of our entire economy. And for all those reasons, uh, President Obama has proposed a national goal, one if completely supported, uh, would graduate an additional five million community college students by the end of this decade. It really would be a game changer in this country, so let us hope that Washington can actually deliver. Um, now, if we uh, 
don't do that, we have to face some really hard, uh, harsh facts. And that is today, here and across the nation, only about one in every five community college students earns a degree within three years, and a very large percentage never earn a degree at all. Uh, there are a lot of factors that contribute to that, the economic hardships that many students face, the demands of jobs and family that students often have to meet even while engaged in their studies, and the fact that many students just don't get the guidance that they need to make the big step up to succeeding in college. All of that contributes to what uh, all too often is a tragic waste of effort, ambition, and opportunity for the students who lose their way and for our country. But the good news is that, at least here in New York City, we've shown we can do better than that. About five years ago, our administration, through our Center for Economic Opportunity, otherwise known as CEO, worked with CUNY to create a pilot project called Accelerated Study in Associate Programs, or ASAP. And we designed ASAP to provide low-income community college students with academic, financial, and social support that helps them earn degrees in areas like, for example, nursing. Uh, today, five years later, ASAP is in place in six community colleges, and the result is more than 50% of students in the program who are, able to, are able to earn their degrees within three years, and that is twice the national average. It's that kind of success that has made educators and researchers all across the country sit up and take notice, and it has also led to the, uh, the idea that we have here of an entirely new community college, one that offers extra support to students and also requires a lot of extra effort from students. I remember when I went to college, uh, I didn't have to support my family. Uh, I didn't have to uh, take care of some of the members of my family. All I had to do was have a job while I was in college so I could pay the tuition bills, and my parents helped a little bit that they could. Uh, but it was uh, compared to the challenges facing kids today, uh, I was really blessed. I had almost a free ride by comparison. Uh, you listen to the stories of those who have to work and raise their family, and when their college students be the adult in their families, it just gives you pause to think how lucky some of us were, uh, but how driven these young men and women are. They understand that education is the future for themselves, as well as their family, as well as the country, and they're doing something about it. So let me just say something about the 330 students here. Uh, this is a big moment for you. Today you'll walk through the doors of the new school that we're opening, your school, the new community college, and you also walk to the next chapters of your lives. Uh, I want to tell you I am proud and confident in each of you. I'm proud because it really does take a lot of courage to be the first to do something, to be pioneers. And as the first class in New Community College, a new school with a bold new approach to learning, that's exactly what you are. Uh, many of you are pioneers in another sense. You'll be the first in your families to go to college. Uh, that's an enormous achievement, one that you've got every right to take pride in. It is the great American dream. Uh, you won't remember, but many years ago, even before I was born, uh, the great American dream was a dream that people around the world had. They came here, they came to the Lower East Side. Uh, they shed, incidentally, all the remnants of their past. They changed their names, they changed their uh, cooking, they changed their clothing, they changed uh, uh, their language uh, just to become Americans. And they went to work not thinking that they were going to be successful, but the great dream, if they worked two or three jobs all day long, seven days a week, was maybe, maybe their kids could go to college. And who knows? Today, you can really make a difference. You, in many senses, are the product of exactly that kind of thinking. Uh, being a pioneer is a little overwhelming. Everybody knows that. Uh, and that's why uh, President Even Beck and his team are committed to being with you every step of the way to give you the guidance and advice and they'll also expect you to do your best. And as I said, we stretched the city budget to help start this school. Uh, thankfully, we had help from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and I'm delighted they are represented here today by Program Officer Ann Wynn. Uh, together, we're investing something more in you, and we're also expecting something more from you. Uh, a few weeks ago, one of our city's newspapers did a story about uh, this school and interviewed some of your incoming students. Uh, one whose name struck me is Destiny Jackson. Uh, Destiny, you have exactly the right name for this school. Uh, 
because uh, it's one that has special meaning, seriously, for the entire class. Because each of you really are holding your uh, destinies in your own hands. I'll just tell you from somebody that I guess has been more successful than anybody has a right to be. Uh, I never thought I was the smartest person in the room, but I always thought I could outwork everybody else. And that would be my advice to you. Be the first one in, be the last one to leave, be the one that stays at your desk. Don't be afraid to ask questions. That person next to you doesn't know the answer any more than you do. Uh, you may think that it's embarrassing to ask a question, but I've always asked the question, and I've always been surprised that everybody said afterwards, thank you for asking. So uh, now you have a chance to make a difference. Um, I say the same thing to you that I say to everyone that either joins my team at City Hall or joins me in my company. Uh, welcome aboard. Don't screw it up. <laughs> or words to that effect. So let me just simply add, this is an opportunity to learn, to grow, and launch your careers here in the greatest city in the world. Good luck. God bless all of you. I'm going back to work. <laughs>